I'd like to welcome our next guest, uh, Abhinav. Are you out there? Maybe. Hey. Oh, he's here. Oops. Wonderful. Hey, Abhi. Good to see you all. Thanks for having me. Uh, good welcome. to see you as well. Thanks for joining us. Where are you joining us from, Abhi? I'm out actually in the Bay Area. Art and I have been saying that we should meet up sometime. Oh my gosh, Maybe. yeah. I know. Uh, we, we are normally in offices that are 11 miles apart. Uh, and that's just far enough that Abhinav has not offered enough lunch food to me, uh, Gigi, to incentivize me to join him. So just... Shouldn't that go the other way around? Maybe. You, uh... yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe. I thought, yeah. yeah, I thought you maybe recently got the upgrade to, to principal PMM. So uh, uh, it's, it's actually you who does that for us lowly senior product managers. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> All right. Um, well, without further ado, Abhinav, maybe we should talk a little bit, Abhi, about uh, the feature here that we're going to talk about. I think we're going to talk about uh, managed services for Prometheus Collector, right? That is correct. Uh, so just a little bit of context. Um, yeah. Managed service Please. for Prometheus is a container monitoring um, time series database. It's built on top of the open source Prometheus uh, project, which allows you to very easily monitor a variety of uh, end uh, technologies that uh, expose Prometheus metrics in the Prometheus metrics format, um, which is just a format for metrics coming from different applications like EC2 machines, your custom applications, your containers. And most commonly, we find that customers will run a Prometheus monitoring system on top of or with EKS uh, clusters and the containers that they run in those EKS clusters. As a part of this launch, what we've done is we've taken the collection component, the piece that customers run today to go collect Prometheus metrics from these EKS clusters, the containers, the applications that they run, and we've put that in a fully managed setup so that customers don't have to self-run these components. They don't have to worry about patching, managing, upgrading, right sizing, scaling, kind of all the traditional problems that come with running things yourself in your own environments and having to pair them for your own kind of scaling situations. Um, so I know you promised demos art. Maybe I can show the screen. We can walk right through kind of how you yeah, might set why, this up. Why don't you share the screen? And while you're doing that, I just want to make a comment. You know, I think this really pairs well with some of the discussion that uh, Jeff was offering earlier about how we've kind of combined a couple of services and other things to simplify uh, the experience for customers out there to get people started here. And I think this is a great case and a great example as well about how you've been, we've been, our improvements here should hopefully make things even easier to, to make the service even easier to use, right? Exactly. That's kind of the whole intent is we want to make it as easy as possible for our end users and our end customers to go gather Prometheus metrics from their EKS environments, make sure that they're able to observe it, uh, make it as simple as possible. And hopefully you'll kind of see that as we go through the demo here. We're going to go ahead and create a new cluster. You'll see us enable Prometheus metrics for that cluster, and then I'll show it to you in an existing cluster and you can see what it looks like in the cluster itself. Um, you know, Art and Gigi, maybe you'll play a little game with me and we can see if we can spot the collector in the cluster itself. Oh, let's I'm do game. it. Yeah, I'm good I do for have, game. Go, I do have a question you. as you as you slowly walk through this, Abby. How did you guys come up with this as a feature that you wanted to be releasing? What was the driver? Yeah. Was it just known that customers needed this and wanted this? Or was there something that really sparked your interest? We try to be as customer obsessed as possible. And it turns out our customers are very vocal when you keep on listening to them. And I think a lot of them came back to us and said that they couldn't figure out how to either install a collector in the EKS cluster to go pull these Prometheus metrics, or they couldn't maintain and manage it, or they couldn't scale it with their workloads as their workloads came up and down. And as customers were adopting the managed service for Prometheus as a scaling and reliable way to collect and analyze Prometheus metrics, this started to become a bigger and bigger pain point for a lot of the customers we were talking to. And you know, like most things at AWS, as we were trying to be customer obsessed and really listening on that pain, that kind of drove us to saying, hey, can we actually manage this for them too? Can we take one step further and beyond just managing the time series database, can we actually manage the collection process itself? Yeah, this is a great example, Gigi, uh, of working backwards from the customer needs. All right. Oh, wait a minute here. Skiing is great. Now, I already explained to everybody, it is not, at least for me, uh, but okay. <laughs> Art is bad at skiing might be an, another appropriate cluster but, game if we have to create a second. But I try. I try. I just, 
just say mm -hmm. don't give up good thing about cluster names we can change them so art is bad skiing is great uh, i think that's close oh, enough yeah that's, that's more appropriate that's... actually that's just, <laughs> that's just the truth <laughs> um Max. i'm just walking through the cluster creation flow here and uh we're just going to fill in kind of the standard entries here you're not going to see me change very many of the options we're going to really just focus in on the prometheus metrics option when we get there so the rest of this is all standard kind of eks cluster create flow uh, most of these are just default settings that exist um you know I, I won't spend too much time going into the details of some of these ones here i'm gonna just jump forward next standard and networking as, settings as we keep all these settings right could you just in case someone who's not me obviously needed you know a refresher on kubernetes could you just give a quick short what is an eks cluster and why would someone choose it Perfect, yeah. Um, Kubernetes is an orchestration mechanism for containers. Uh, what is a container? It's a, a packaging of an application in a, uh, that can be deployed in a... I'll help you. In a slightly, yeah. Yeah, in a <laughs> and that's, that's independent, can be an independent, isolated environment. And it's uh, called right. a container just to take a name from like shipping containers that are out there where you, know, you could deploy your container inside the cloud or someplace and it kind of does its thing in this case operates within the container and there could be other containers that have been deployed and they're all kind of kind of operate independently of each other and you don't necessarily have to pay attention to some of the underlying things that are going on except you can cool. of course there you go you can if you yeah. want and yeah. the compute power because it's managed that's one of the benefits of eks right that's so right. all of our managed services there's that big value add of um of us in being in control of compute you well, don't have to worry about it you don't have to be super deep in it in order to optimize with it yeah Gigi, i think that that's a great thing we were discussing with jeff earlier about a little bit about the cloud but and in the origins of the cloud but you know part of our story here at amazon is is we offer a full kind of uh portfolio from managed services which are the some easy some of the easiest ways to get started we handle those managed services like this all the way down to if you want to play around with what we would characterize as bare metal instances at the lowest framework level as well so it's a great you know, you have your choices here and managed services are one of the easiest and best ways I like to think that you can get started at the cloud, particularly because it's independent and you can move forward. All right, let's hear more about it right. from you. That's yeah. all I'll interrupt. It's all you. <laughs> no, you know, exactly building on what Art said, you know, a lot of the things that we focus on are just removing friction from enabling end users to actually adopt these uh, concepts and these new technologies, making it easier and easier for folks to onboard into those setups. Um, so here we're at it. Here's kind of the metrics card in your create cluster flow. Um, and as you can see, there's just a single checkbox. So we've taken something that could have involved you to actually um, install something, uh, run a Helm chart, actually uh, run com some component in cluster yourself, to now it's just a checkbox in the actual cluster flow. And of course, I know many of customers told me that nobody does uh, clicking in the console anymore. It's out of fashion. Uh, we do have Terraform support, CLI support, API support, all the other jazz. It's just less fun to demo those things than it is to demo a console. So here we're at checking boxes. Um, but yeah, that's all you need. Boxes all the time in the console. So <laughs> I'm still old school console, but okay. Keep going. Art loves a good console. I too. <laughs> I too love a good console. <laughs> no. But in theory, to enable Prometheus metrics, it's all you need. You just check that box. Uh, I'll go ahead and press the kind of next button all the way to the create. And of course, it's perfect timing for me to get logged out of this cluster. We'll just jump right back into that. Let me just jump right there. All right. We're going to jump here for a second since I got totally booted out at the wrong time. Uh, if you keep on going through the create, it'll actually show you that the cluster is created, that the scraper is there. Um, at the end, I'm going to tease here that you can see those metrics in Grafana uh, after they get collected and sent through uh, via Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus. Um, we're going to switch to a cluster I had previously created, since EKS clusters do take just a tad longer than I have in this demo here to be created. Uh, and we'll play the quick game of, you know, what does this look like once it's enabled in the cluster itself? So GG and Art, if you can help me out here. Uh, and the game I like to play is, can you spot the collector? And so what you're looking for is something that's a Prometheus server, uh, something that has the words ADOT in it. Uh, feel free to poke and prod when I show you the screen and ask if that thing is the collector, and I'll explain that it isn't. Um, and of course, you know, best of luck. I hope you find it. And Somewhere anyone in the chat, 
also chime in. Yeah, you, they're more likely to chime us. in. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of, Gigi. Gonna oh, we're going to well, beat real bad. <laughs> let's, let's see if someone in the chat beats you all to it. So what I'm going to run here is just I'm going to go grab every single pod in this EKS cluster that I'm running. Uh, like I said back at the beginning, traditionally, a customer would run an actual Prometheus pod or an ADOT collection pod or an open, open telemetry collector inside of their EKS cluster. It would show up as one of these pods in the cluster itself. And if you're not familiar with what a pod is, it's like an instance of a container running in an EKS environment. Got it. That is helpful. It's been a little while since I played around with EKS. Perfect. So here are all the pods that I'm running in my EKS cluster. Go ahead and take a second, take a look, see if you can spot a Prometheus server, an ADOT, an open telemetry collector. Am I wrong to, be, to go to the obvious here that these names yeah, you're with wrong. Prometheus? In it? Yeah, uh, sorry. Are you That's wrong? So the node exporter is not the collector, just to be clear. It's an yeah. exporter art. <laughs> so the way Prometheus works <laughs> is export, that it has two yeah. concepts. It has exporters that expose Prometheus metrics, and then it has a collector that'll collect from those things that are being exported. And the whole point of this is to show that there is actually no Prometheus server or ADOT agent or OTEL collector in the cluster. So I do apologize, Art and Gigi. It's a game that you were set up you to lose. Us. Um, but Art, that's kind of the point. Good. I'm sorry for being harsh there. You did a really good job. I didn't even say anything. I waited for you to mess up. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to do a public apology for that. That, is, <laughs> that makes you a lot of sense. It's, it's agentless. So there's no exactly. Agent. It's fully managed for you. So you're not running anything as the end user. You don't have to worry about how it interacts with your components. It's fully managed. And that allows us to scrape these metrics in a very uh, scalable, reliable way without you having to go manage of any of these components yourself. So hopefully that removes a lot of the undifferentiated heavy lifting you have to do uh, when trying to figure out how to collect Prometheus metrics, manage Prometheus metrics, and use them. Uh, since nobody really cares about things that you run in your cluster unless it produces pretty graphs at the end, Let's go ahead and go to Grafana. Uh, this is the managed Grafana service that you're seeing here. It's just a quick UI that pairs with managed Prometheus. Um, and you'll see here that you have all those same metrics coming through. So I, I had that node exporter that we picked on so we can actually look up the node CPU, for example. Let's see if I can quickly write a query here. And all I'm doing is I'm writing a PromQL query. PromQL is the Prometheus query language that enables you to access and graph and analyze the Prometheus metrics. So let's just go ahead and grab the average uh, node CPU running across my cluster. Go ahead and just do a run here. That was and great there you have it. You got wow. a pretty graph out of it all. That was awesome. Well, I'm impressed how fast as well and the data yeah. that you can get out of this uh, here. So this is great. Um, you know, we, we and we can even see kind of, you know, here it's, uh, we're both on the West Coast, so it's coming through at 12.48 uh, p.m. So great. That is very is... fast. What does is, what is that timing look like if you're not using this new functionality? Like, is it is it slower or is it just more of a pain? It'll just be, so customers today that don't have this functionality or don't, aren't using this functionality are just having to install these collectors themselves. So the end graphic that you see here is still achievable. You just might be managing the actual extra collection component that you run, uh, which right. is what this launch will help remove. Got it. And that is a lot of time, even if the graph comes up in just as little amount of time. That is. Hopefully, it's a lot of setup and effort and a lot of uh, initial setup time that's been saved. Definitely. Yeah, I think that's well, one that's... of the key here simplification. Sorry, Avanov, I cut you off. There. No, I was going to say that's the end of the demo. Thank you for playing the game with me. And yeah, exactly. The whole point is that we're hopefully removing components uh, that yeah. you have to manage yourself. And, and thank you for joining us and showing us uh, how to do this and how to get started. So for folks out there, you know, this is a great example of you know how we've done this uh, simplification here. So check it out, as Jeff actually was saying on the last segment, Gigi. You know, you need to try it uh, in order to mm -hmm. kind of learn a little bit more about it. So this is uh, Amazon Amazon managed service for Prometheus Collector. So pretty cool. Thanks for cool. Uh, joining us today, Abhinav. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much. Me. This was enlightening.